I'd like you all to just try hand, your hand at writing at least one multiple choice question based on the content that you just learned. You can use your slides and you may ask me any questions you want, but here are the rules. <laughs> There's only two rules that I thought of. Um, one rule, the first rule is only four response options. So you know you write the stem, what we call the stem, then you write your response options and we want four. Not if I could only give one tip to a graduate student who's taking this course, um, who will be teaching in the future, um, it would really be centered around active learning. And if, you know, and, I, and in that I would say that basically every time you teach, every time you plan for your teaching, you know, to, to make it a habit to ask yourself, what are the students doing? What are they going to do? Um, and what do you really want them to do with the information that you're giving them? Um, and then challenge yourself to ask, what more could they be doing? What could they be doing more of? Actually writing questions and consulting with your colleagues, um, other faculty maybe, um, your TAs, you know, anyone to look, have others look at the questions can actually help you um, develop better questions because they may see things that you, you don't, especially if you're the content expert. Um, it actually helps to show your questions to someone who doesn't know anything about the content because they may be able to guess the right answer if they're not, you know, really strong questions. While students can obviously um, take notes during a class, that's an, possibly an active way to learn, I actually would ask myself, no, what more can they do besides taking notes, besides listening? Um, is there something that I can incorporate into my class that would enable the students to um, verbalize or, you know, um, to force them to paraphrase or summarize, do something else with the material instead of just um, word for word copying down what I'm saying. Um, and what are we looking for with those incorrect responses, do you think? What would make it a better test question, or a good test question? Um, what do we want from the incorrect answers? I think you'd want something that's sort of right, but not exactly right. Yes, and that's the hard part, right? It's so easy to come up with the right answer, because we know what that is, but it's hard to come up, sometimes can be hard to come up with the incorrect answers that sound plausible. It's not just about me giving them information. I want the students to do something with it. Whether it's you know, coming up with some kind of verbal response to answer a question or to explain to the person sitting next to them what's going on in the class or to write down an explanation for something or to ask a question in writing. Mm -hmm. Holistic grading. Okay. Okay, so here's our question. If you're teaching for the first time, what time of grading, what type of grading is preferable that we discussed in class? And the correct answer would be? Comparative, C. Happens to be C again. Every time you incorporate an activity or expect or ask the students to do more with the material, you're letting them practice the skills that you think are, are the most valuable for the class. And I, that's what I would really want to encourage all graduate students taking this course to consider. And you know, regardless of discipline, you can make it work. And even if you're, you believe in lecturing, you believe that lecturing is the best way to teach, still you can incorporate some kind of active learning just to give them that practice time and processing time. Mm -hmm.